Hi, my name is Camelia from Photo Party Upload. Before we get started, let me show you some of the equipment that we use. A computer, an iPad, your camera, and a wireless network. You can create a wireless network by using a mobile hotspot like Verizon's MiFi or a cell phone that creates one such as an Android or iPhone. You can also use a wireless router. So now that we've seen all the equipment, let's get started on creating an event. Before getting computer. started with Photo Party Upload, you're going to have to turn off the firewall on your Windows computer. If you're not sure how to do that, you can go to our homepage, photopartyupload.com, and click on how it works. There are some great resources here that you could check out before you get started. Down here you can click on Need Help Troubleshooting, and here's instructions for Windows 7, and also for Windows XP, that will tell you how to turn off your Windows firewall. You'll have to do that on any computer that you'll be using with the Photo Party Upload system. You'll only have to turn it off once, though, and then it will be off. So, take a look at these instructions if you need help turning off your Windows firewall before you get started. After registering for Photo Party Upload, the first step is to log in and create your first event. To do that, go to login.photopartyupload.com and click on Login in the top right. Here, enter the email address that you used when signing up, and the password you created, and then hit Login. This is where you'll go to see all your past events. When you first sign up, you won't have any events here, so click on Create New Event in the bottom left. On this screen, you can enter the event date. This must be the date your event is taking place. So I'm going to create an event for today, January 11th. You cannot use events that are in the past. So I'll be able to use this event today, but I won't be able to use it tomorrow. As it says above, you're given 30, so don't worry if your party goes after midnight. I'm going to name the event PPU Test for Photo Party Upload. We're going to skip the event password and address and go ahead and enter City and hit Next. Now on this screen, you can choose all the services you'd like your guests to be able to utilize within the app. Here on the top box, we can choose to add a Facebook button so the guests can upload to Facebook, the ability to upload to Twitter, email, and print. I'm going to choose to allow them to collect emails, which means that a spreadsheet will be available with all of the email addresses. Even if a guest just wants to print, they'll be prompted to enter their email address, and I'll go ahead and add a disclaimer. I'll explain more about that on the next page. The next page will give me options for every service that we have enabled here. We're going to save the options in this bottom box for a future tutorial. And then below here, this is where we could add a graphic overlay if we want to. The specs that you need for the graphic overlay are indicated by clicking Learn More. You can create your graphic overlay in any program as long as it's to the right specs, and then you can upload it here. The event manager settings that we're filling out right now can be done from any computer. It does not need to be the computer that you're using at the event. So go ahead and click Next. Since we said we wanted to allow Facebook, this is where we'll put the Facebook album name. This means that when a guest uploads a photo from our event, the Photo Party Upload system will automatically create a new album on that guest's personal Facebook profile with the name that we indicate. So we'll call this Photo Party Upload Test. The default Twitter message will be shown when the guest uploads their photo from your party to Twitter. You can use hashtags here. So you could write something like having a blast with at LA Photo Party. You can use any hashtags or at signs there. Since we indicated that we wanted the guests to be able to upload their photos to their email, this is where you can adjust email settings. This is the from address. That means when the guest sends themselves a photo from the iPad to their email, this is the address it will come from. The important thing to remember is that if the guests were to reply to that email, let's say they replied and said, I loved your service of being able to upload photos and I'd like more info, this is the address that the reply will go to. I'm going to use an email address I set up earlier at photos at lafotoparty.com. 
The subject's going to be, check out my photos from John and Mary's wedding. Okay. Here's where we can put the header of the body of the email. And this will be before the image appears. The image will be embedded in the email beneath this section. So if you wanted to, you could say, your awesome photos are below. This is full HTML here, which means that you can also add images, links, and anything else you can put onto a website. Image text is a piece of text that would appear with each image. So if the guest uploads four images, they'll have four images embedded and the text will appear four times. And here's the footer, so you might want to do something like enjoy your photos and your website so that they can get more information about you or your client. Again, you could put full images and links there as well. Your disclaimer message. Uh, since we said we wanted to gather email addresses in a spreadsheet, this gives you a chance to tell people or ask their permission to do so, or to ask them anything else you might want. So you might want to put something like, do you agree to let LA Photo Party add you to a monthly newsletter? Okay. This text will appear on the iPad, and the guests in this case would have to click Agree before they're able to access their photos on the iPad. Or you can click this Opt Out button, and it will add an Opt Out option. So when they see this text, they enter their email address, and they can click either Agree or Opt Out. If they hit Opt Out, they'll be able to access their images, but they've told you they don't agree with your terms, and in this case, the terms are being added to your monthly newsletter. When you get the spreadsheet of all the email addresses, it will indicate the email address of each user and whether they accept your terms or opted out. Go ahead and click Next and accept the terms. So we've now created an event. Here it is.